Okay, in this fifth chapter, we're just gonna quickly review the protocols. So when it comes to spinning, and what we've seen in the previous uh, chapters is that there's really three protocols. Now, remember that this is specific for horizontal centrifuges, right? And always remember that if it's a fixed angle centrifuge, the protocols have to be adapted slightly um, because of the fact that the G-force at the RCF max is different on a horizontal versus a fixed angle. So we're gonna review um, the different protocols, liquid PRF versus solid PRF versus the CPRF protocols and what they're utilized for. So the liquid PRF is what's very commonly used are called IPRF. And um, when we use a horizontal centrifuge, of course, we go a little bit faster because we learned that the 60G protocols for three to four minutes were a little bit too slow. But this is going to give an increase in the concentration of platelets and leukocytes when we compare this to the solid PRF protocols. So we get more platelets that are accumulated in this upper layer, okay? And that's typically utilized in various fields. So we can mix this with bone graft and make sticky bone. Um, we can also inject it into tissues or use it with microneedling. Um, people will use this as well for non-surgical periodontal therapy or for endodontic procedures, okay? This is typically, like I said, a very small layer. So typically one cc and you're gonna try and concentrate the liquid platelet fibrin more so than when we use a solid PRF uh, protocol. When we do the solid PRF, it's faster, and what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to more evenly distribute the layers of platelets, and we're trying to get a bigger yield. So now we're getting more of the platelets in the upper layer, so we see a faster spin protocol, and we have a nice even distribution of cells in the upper layers. That's used because when you generate the membranes, now you don't necessarily want a very small concentration. You want a membrane that's of bigger size and you want a nice even distribution. I take that fibrin clot, I lay it down and I have an even distribution here, okay? This is typically used uh, more frequently, especially in dentistry. Majority of dental procedures, we use this for soft tissue healing around implants. We can cut PRF into small fragments, uh, use it for sinus grafting, GBR procedures, et cetera. Also utilized for the healing of complex diabetic wounds. So this is the membranes and the protocols that we use here. Okay, so that's basically what we use for solid PRF. When it comes to the CPRF protocols, this is a faster spin cycle and the cells are going to get accumulated right at the Buffy coat and then they're very rich there. Ideally, this is what you want to be using as your liquid platelet-rich fibrin. And of course, in medicine, uh, as well as in the injectable uh, field, a lot of people are using this simply because it's more concentrated with platelets. So like we've seen in the previous uh, chapter three, when it came to CPR protocols, they're typically 10 to 15, 16 fold increase in platelets. And that's the way that you wanna do that. So you can use this for a variety of different procedures, filling facial tissues. Um, we'll also use it for GBRs, uh, procedures with the extended working properties. And we'll review that in chapter seven. And mainly, like I said, injections in the joint spaces. If you only have a certain amount of volume that you can put in somebody's knee, you wanna make sure you maximize how many platelets and leukocytes that you're then gonna collect and then you can inject that thereafter. So that's basically the overview uh, of the three protocols and these are the three main ones that you'll see throughout the rest of the book. Again, liquid platelet-rich fibrin is that small layer at the top that's concentrated with liquid and platelets. The solid PRF is the membrane with an even distribution of platelets. And then the CPRF is a fast protocol where we're taking all the cells, we're bunching them up right at the layer, we're getting rid of this upper layer, and then we're just gonna concentrate that layer right there, okay? So that's a review of the three protocols, and we'll look, um, we'll talk about the tubes next in chapter six. Thank you. Mm -hmm.